Hello and welcome back to the Reaper. So we've got another tactical replay for you today. It was the whopping great Hornet match from two or three days ago. Uh, some people have asked to have a quick uh, replay to see what happened and how the Reds did so well basically. So we're not going to get too involved in it because uh, it was a big fight and it will last forever. So let's just set him, set him running. Uh, so we had, a, we had a bit of a mare with the carriers. We started off having two carriers for about 20 Hornets, about 20 blue Hornets to land on turned into an absolute nightmare trying to get 10 hornets on each carrier in real life you know kind of laggy conditions because obviously when you put 20 plus hornets in a uh, server it becomes you get all kinds of problems so um being british and never giving up what we did is we went for five carriers and five people on or four people on each carrier and it just about worked and i say just about some people had to leave because it was it was getting problematic but we made it and that's all that matters right now Right, um, if you remember, the train's not quite right here for whatever reasons, but don't really matter. There is hostile SAM site somewhere, if you can see it. Um, there it is. That's an S300 site. That has a range of about 50 miles, 60 miles if you're up high, about 20 miles or so if you're down low. So, uh, first, these guys went out. They were... I think they were Dagger. I think these guys were Bolter. I think these, this was me, this was um, the first half of Hammer, so these guys were Seed, Cap here, Cap here, um, and then the Strike Flights and the rest of my group are still back at base sorting themselves out. Right, um, now we, pause it there, we didn't want these two Cap Flights off so early, but because we had so many problems getting people airborne with the lag and, you know, just general problems, we had to send them off early so that these guys could literally just about take off then. So first things first, these guys here, Dagger, get fired up by the uh, by the SAM site about 40 or 50 miles out. So they're going to do um, our job basically. They're going to accept the missiles and um, and and burn the missiles away. And we're going to eventually drain the missile uh, the missile battery out of missiles. Had about 30 missiles, 40 maybe. Uh, so you can see they're doing exactly the right thing. As soon as they're fired on, turn round, head away, aim your nose down, and you'll burn the missiles energy off straight away. So let's carry on. And the Reds here <coughs> have the fortunate position of being able to um, <coughs> operate in impunity in this whole area because they're covered by an open S300 SAM site. You see these guys have, have done it properly, they've not left themselves in any danger from these missiles, they're heading away 500 knots and the missiles are already burnt down to like 400 knots because there's only so far they can go basically and that's probably about 40 or 50 miles. Right, uh, the first action is going to happen. Right, so red for group one, that's three. Uh, sorry, no, that's four of them. That's five of them. That's all of them. Right, so f yeah, there are five reds and they get two lives. The rest of us only get one life and the red carriers is 100 miles over there. So P-Man's um, group are heading in beautifully spread, two miles in between each, each man. Red's not as good spread, but we're good first. We've got a missile out at seven miles, which is pretty much perfect for relatively low altitude. So just want to slow it down. That's going to be for me. Now rem remember, these aim sevens are Fox ones; so they're not Fox threes. Um, so if you turn away, like uh, Warren has there, that missile will lose track. Basically, uh, that's part of the um, push and pull game of Fox one combat. Basically, so Fox one combat is more about team operation than a single a single guy. So this guy would have fired um, as more of a distraction or a posturing shot to send one of these guys cold, so that the cover that guy or that guy can come in and actually do the killing. And that's probably what we're about to see. Stand by. Fox 3 fighter, you can do more on your own because you can turn away and the shot will still track. So, uh, Joker's just got himself in trouble. Thump! No, you missed that. Although that missile looked like it was tracking, uh, I think P-Man had turned away by that point and so it was just a <coughs> coincidence. No, it was nowhere near him. Uh, right, we've got a hit and that is a, just a plain old error by Grinkle. He just flew, he knew the missile was coming. And he did a tiny bit of evasive manoeuvre. Tiny, you can see how evasive the manoeuvre was by the deviation between his, his, um, uh, if you like, his vector path here and his actual path there. Tiny deviation, a small barrel roll, and some chaff just wasn't enough to fool a, f a full blooded aim seven. Where the guy has got a full STT lock, never going to happen. You've got to turn cold or do an amazingly high G jink if you want to beat that kind of missile. So that's an error there. Let's see what else we've got. P-Man makes a bit of an error here. So P-Man's got himself into ACM. ACM is beyond, uh, within 10 miles or dogfight range, basically. And the one thing you don't want to be doing once you get into ACM, unless you're in an amazingly good 
position, i.e. the guys on your nose, is to be flapping about, yo-yoing, circling, anything that's anything other than going in for a kill. So at this point, if you're in, if you get yourself in ACM and you know you're in ACM, because you know the Joker's right near him, you can't flap about. Either you're attacking the target or you're running away and allowing your cover to help. Uh, he's almost certainly going to get himself killed because he's somehow got to do 270 degree and locate Joker to stand a chance of getting a shot at anyone. That should be an easy kill for Joker, we'll see. No, Joker's after a different man. Alamancy, same thing really. He's got into he's got into ACM and he, he's done his beaten his missile and then he's come straight back into ACM. As I always teach, if you've been watching me through the years, it's 10 miles back out, 20 miles back out, you can't turn in in a group fight. So you can't do a small turn and then jink back into a, a tight fight like this and expect to live. Someone's going to be tracking you. So there's Alamancy out, and rightly so. The difference between him and Joker, look, Joker's always on the aggressive. Um, he didn't need to turn around for whatever he didn't get fired at. So he was always aggressing, and they, so he was in a good place. Allo P Man were always in bad places. They never really had their targets uh, spotted in ACM, and they're just kind of flying around until they spot a target, and that's always going to lose. You watch P Man, I'll probably kill this guy now. Now it's Joker that's doing the um, flapping around. He's an ACM and he's just lost all his speed and he's looking for a target, but it's got to put him in trouble. P Man Merge, I'm not sure that's going to hit. No, too close, the shot was too close. You have uh, When you fire a missile, you have a minimum range marker that you can fire. If you fire within that minimum range marker, it won't track, basically. The missile doesn't have enough time to maneuver and, and whatnot. So we're now in a scissors dogfight. Let's get that set up. There we go. Now all about who can get behind the other guy, who can turn quicker and slower in a scissors to get behind the other guy. And you see Joker managed to get all the way down to 200 quick. P-Man st um, stuck it out at 600 knots, um, which is fine, unless you're in a scissors like this, which is a, de which is a death sentence. <coughs> and these missiles are really good, even though P-Man's at a fast left to right aspect, that could be a kill. Really good missiles. No, it's a good dodge. So one advantage about going fast is you can go left to right or right to left fast in front of the other plane and you can dodge missiles that way by asking the missiles to do too much, confusing them. But this looks like a pretty clear cut win here unless P-Man can really pull something out. There you go, possibly another miss. Oh, there's many of the kills, simple as that. Right, so gone over that, why they won. Uh, and they did really well, they only lost one guy, question mark. For three, no, they didn't lose any guys and three kills. Very good fighting by the Reds there. Everyone did everything right, pretty much. Right. Well done, boys. Uh, right, Rage, I think he just flies away now. He does disconnect at that point and then rejoins. Uh, right, in comes Cap, Signore. Uh, coming in. We're not really to, uh, we're not really here to, uh, to fight air to air, but we saw P-Man's group was in trouble, so we've come to help. Same with these dudes. Uh, Dagger, they've seen P-Man's in trouble. We're all coming to help now. We didn't realise there's five reds here, obviously. Um, I thought there was maybe one or two at the most. Firing on Rage. Rage is burning away. Yeah, he'll be perfectly safe because they won't be able to catch him up. Nothing they can do to catch him up. Speed that up, shall we? Pew Pew Cap is firing at some dude, probably this guy. Preen. That's not a kill shot at all. It's just a warning shot, I guess, from that range. Just trying to send this guy cold, get him off this guy's backside. Let's speed that up. We go and then the first thing I do is turn around, order Signori to turn back, and we're cold while the troops come in. The troops are dagger, these guys here. Their job is to do the air to air killing. Um, Signori's got a little American eyes, a little hot headed, and he's gone in for the kills, which is a bit naughty, but it does work out well for him. If these two, if these two were coordinated, they would easily have taken Signori down between them. Hang on there. Ba, 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 ba. Joker, wrong place, wrong time, too slow, not aggressive enough. It's kind of, um, what I was saying about earlier, he's, he's kind of got stuck here and he's not really knowing what he's doing, he's not going fast, he's not aggressing, he's just kind of mincing around here. And that's when you see guys get caught out and shot down, even good guys. So it really should have been in, take your shots, out. In, take your shots, out. There shouldn't be of any mincing around here. Bye, see you later. There shouldn't be, it's when you get this mincing here, not knowing what's going on. So when you see the good guys starting to get shot down, so Signore is going to capitalise on that. Got a missile out at two miles. That is almost certainly a kill shot, unless uh, Joker's got something really good up his sleeve. Good, really good. Do you see that jink there? There wasn't that much G on there, but he was he was really putting the F-18 through a lot. 
went up 20 degrees alpha. It was just enough of a jink, a sudden jink, and the missile just couldn't adapt to it. However, a sidewinder, much more maneuverable, almost almost impossible to jink a sidewinder from the rear. And that is a pure shot. So, yep, so uh, there's nothing a Joker really could have done to have stayed alive there except not to be there in the first place. And that's what I try and teach, basically, is putting yourself in the right place at, you know, to begin with, and then you don't have to do all this crazy dodging and stuff. Right. Chromosome versus Signore. Chromosome. Um, I don't know what to say. I mean, he's come in. He's heading out now, just like I said he should. Wrong place, wrong time, I guess. He just he didn't expect to... You know, he's in cruise mode now. He didn't expect a fighter to be there. Um, my only complaint is that... And he's low. Um, my only complaint is that when you head back, you usually burn back, at least for the first few miles. Um, because yeah, although we don't like wasting fuel... You're on, as soon as you turn back from combat and you're heading out the first few miles you're in extreme danger there could easily be someone tailing you so I usually tell my guys dive and burn get up to 700 knots and it's very hard for this guy to do what he's doing if you're going 700 knots the merge is almost impossible um, that's my only suggestion there really other than that just the wrong place at the wrong time it's going to be obviously an easy kill so we'll just blast through that just a little sidewinder at the tailpipe and that's that done Right, all this time you've noticed missiles have been coming out from the S300 against these guys up here, so they've been doing their job. Cap's back in combat now, getting Signori linked up, we're going to come and do our job with the S300s. So why don't we look at that there. So I'm 38 miles away on the deck, it doesn't have that range low down. Maybe it does. So, uh, Signori, so all these guys are getting fired at and they're all doing what they need to do, turn away and, and run away basically. I mean, if you see Cap doing it really well here, so you can turn away and run away, and chances are you will beat it. Just to make extra sure, you can see I'm doing the 20, what I call the 22s. So I turn around, I put my nose in a dive, very important to dive, because otherwise you'll run out of energy. I can do, you can do this on mill power, and then I'm going 22 degrees left, 22 degrees right, 20 left, 20 right, 20 left, 20 right, like that. And you watch what that missile has to do to try and catch up. It burns left, burns right, burns left. And by the time it gets halfway, it's, I've burnt all its energy down. Let's have a quick look at that. And you see, this, look at these little guys after me. No chance at all. And that's an excellent example there of how to beat a missile. You see, these guys are going straight, and that missile could just plough on. It's got a lot further than my missiles, which have basically um, really struggled. Uh, so that's good. These guys are going to carry on doing what they're doing. Ah, now, interestingly, Joyce and Seedor ignored their orders, um, which was to wait until the sounds were clear, then go in. Uh, however, I'm quite glad they did ignore their orders, because it made a pretty cool movie, you've got to admit. These guys are charging in, cowboy style, and going in on the deck 90 feet. And pew, this guy released bombs and flew into his own bombs. So, uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, that's that. Loads of missiles out. We're getting super, super close now. Uh, so it's all getting a bit touch and go. I, ah, right, I saw, in all the midst of this, I saw Preen trying to sneak in for an opportunist attack. And uh, so I've put him on his way with a name 7 while trying to dodge the missiles. Should be okay. This one might even get quite close to me because I've had to push in there. So, bang on the 22s, nose down, mill power. And you see, the missile's dead already. Didn't never even stood a chance. So that is how you <coughs> dodge it. <coughs> uh, right, let's carry on, shall we? Ah, here's a, uh, here's a uh, example of how not to dodge it. You see, Wits came in there. 500 knots, he got full launcher on, he turned around, which is good, and then he turned straight back into the missile. Uh, he probably won't get hit this time, but that's the prime example of how not to dodge a missile. You show him back into it, all you're doing is helping the missile. Um, it looks like these weren't going for him anyway, so it's lucky. But that's a uh, very good chance he's going to get caught out. Okay, there was the same thing. This is these. No, there's a cap, I think. Yep. No, there for these boys. So, which has turned around, straight back into the missile. Beautiful thing for a missile to see. And the missile's now, yep, flying into him. Tiny bit of wiggling won't help. You've got to do what I do. And that is going to be one of those two down that flies straight into the missiles, ignoring all the warnings. Nah, sorry. He can't just fly into an S300 site, do a tiny wing wiggle, and hope to survive. That's bad flying there. So let's hope they pick that up. Uh, these guys, Seedor died here as well. He flew into his own bombs as well, which is um, a little bit silly. Um, right, so it's only the experienced guys now left. Got a cap here of the, um, whatever you call it, seed flight. And all of Dagger still alive. They've been dodging properly, obviously, at long range. Cap's in trouble again, getting my 22s on. Scrubbing that missile, and you can see it's already out of gas, it's already going slower than me now. Lovely. Preen's coming into the action. 
Okay, Dracula was beaming, so I think he might escape. Yes, he has. Merlin might not be so lucky. Ten mile shot. A little bit ambitious. Well, maybe not, actually. Mm, yeah, it is a little bit ambitious, actually. Merlin easily dodges, and of course they've got a good team separation, good everything. Uh, Skay's there for the cover. Merlin calls him for help. Pow. Excellent teamwork. And Merlin is safe, even though <laughs> this missile nearly hit him. Came from that guy's Preen's corpse. Very good. Right, we're going to just fast forward that now, I guess. Uh, so these guys are coming in on their second lives now. Ah, stop. Right, so Tanky came in and managed to miss all of us somehow and got be got behind us. I don't know if that was a tactic. I guess so. I've got a fight with Joker. Let's have a look at that a little more. So two experienced guys fighting. Let's see what we can do. So we're not going to try and kill each other here. Um, I know it sounds silly. But the last thing we want to do when you're heading towards a target is kill them. Or get in a fight with them. What you want to do is get the upper hand one way or another. So the first shots are trying to get the upper hand. They're trying to put the other guy on offensive. And you can see we fire both exactly the same time. Pretty equally matched. Um, and at this point, I know I've got friends that are going to come and support me. I've got my boys here. They're going to come in. So I'm going to turn away and say, come cover me, chaps. Joker doesn't have his boys, so he's going to have to come in and chase me. And he's going to run right into the chainsaw, basically. Right into these guys who are going to come and do the killing. That missile's um, not guiding anymore, obviously, because I've turned around. So it's never any danger. It's taking desperate shots now. You see eight miles on a, tur a, turning, on a cold target. That's more than double the actual distance that missile can travel on a low, fast, cold target. That's a little bit silly. And he's got himself in young man's, uh, what do you call it, young man's um, target fixation mode now. All he can think about is killing me, even though he knows, because I've turned cold, there's nothing he can do to kill me. He's never going to catch me up. Um, and it's, uh, it's now the tactical man's game and my boys are going to come in and take perfect use by the time Joker's got his warning that this missile's on its way he's coming too fast, he's too committed tries to dodge but it was never going to happen so it shows uh, good use of uh, team tactics there what you can do what Joker should have done of course is as soon as his team disengaged he should have disengaged his radar uh, got situational awareness back to see you know, what game I was playing have I got friends coming in and then seeing that I had got friends coming in, put a warning shot on Squiddle and then just turned away back. Um, can't take on a whole group on yourself. Oh, phone call, sorry. Hello. Right, sorry about that. Um, where were we? Yep, so that's that. I think that's the end of it. Let me just, uh, just scroll on. So then, oh no, Tanky's still alive. Not sure, sure what Tanky's doing alive, but he is. He's flying in formation with us. Um, I don't actually know what happens here, so let's have a look. Just kind of flying around. He does a weird thing. Ah, he's seen someone. Seen Merlin. He's going to shoot him down. So none of us are aware that this guy's here. I did have a sneaking suspicion that someone I got through, but I had no evidence of it. Ah, right. So Tanky takes out Merlin. Squiddle, awake as ever, takes him down. And then we merge, IFF, and that is the end of it. So there's only four of us left now. So that's that. Uh, let's just carry on. No reds in play. We're all just doing some gun runs. And, uh, simple as that, really. All right, I've run out of fuel. I'm off to base. Uh, Preen's come back with a second life or whatever. Uh, let's see what happens. Doing some weird zigzagging here. I've never seen that before, so I don't know all that is is a bad thing for you, so I don't know why he's doing it. But he is. And <laughs> just runs straight into straight into a guy who just fox sues him. See all that maintenance about there left and right. The bad thing about that is it means he can't get his radar to settle properly. Um so he had no idea these guys were coming at him. So that was a little bit silly, wasn't it? And that's that. Uh, Caps RTB, I land with 90 pounds of fuel left, which is pretty sick. Sure, strike group Buick finally arrived, I don't know why they're so late, but they are. Bombs away, do a little bit of damage, but pretty pathetic damage to be honest. And that's it, and we turn around and go home. Now for some reason, none of these guys here made it back, so I'm just going to try and see what happened. Ah, another red. Ah, it's very unwise for these guys to have committed, maybe, because these guys are on their way back. These guys probably never would have caught these guys up. These guys are going 700 knots. There was no need for these guys to get in action, really. So there's a bit of a miscalculation there. Although it is three on ones, but we'll see. 
<laughs> he just got himself shot down, so it's just bad. Uh, these guys just turn away. There's no need to fight. Excitable Americans. And they're turning around now. It's probably too late now. Okay, they're running away now, but they're only going 500 knots, so if they'd have done this five minutes ago, they would have been okay. And I guess these guys just catch them up now with their fuel, uh, with their high amounts of fuel. Squirrel down 500 knots, but it's just not fast enough. And some weird merge. That was weird. I guess they've run out of gas. Warren's burning in. 700 knots. Oh, Skay gets himself shot. Squiddle. Yes, hunted down. Just hunted down. Never mind. It was their job at the end of the day to protect the strike package, but I guess that's the way it goes sometimes. Good fight. Really good fight. Right, I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you later.